power. Paul, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, great to be here. Paul, let's start with a reflection point, uh, looking at how far the African continent has come in terms of uh, infrastructure development within the energy and power sectors. Your take on how far we've come? Yeah, well, I go back quite a long way. I, my first uh, assignment in Africa was in 1980. So I've seen a huge amount of changes, um, particularly from the 90s onwards. Uh, and I'm seeing in the last probably seven, eight years, uh, a in major increase in electrifica electrification rates in Africa, which, uh, which is sort of good news for everybody. And you can just see from the huge attendance at the conference what's going on at the moment in the electricity sector in Africa. In terms of Symbian Power specifically, take us through some of the work that you do on the continent. Okay, so we're, we're investors in power on the, con on the continent. So far, we've invested in Nigeria, uh, where we, we owned for quite a while, two years, three years, uh, a 972 megawatt power plant. Um, we were one of the only companies that participated, only foreign companies that participated in the uh, privatization of the Nigeria's electricity sector. We have a 120 megawatt gas turbine power plant in Dar es Salaam. We have uh, 33 megawatt new investment in Kenya uh, for geothermal power. Mm -hmm. In Rwanda, we have two projects on Lake Kivu. Now, Lake Kivu emits methane gas. It's the only lake in the world that emits methane gas from the bed of the lake. And what we do is we tap the gas at very, it's very deep, about 500 meters, 400 to 500 meters. And we uh, extract that gas, split it from the water and turn it into electricity running through generators. And in Madagascar, we have a 40 megawatt plant, which is uh, operated on heavy fuel oil. And the interesting thing is heavy fuel oil is a natural resource in Madagascar. And they have their own oil site there, run by a company called Madagascar Oil. And we've actually taken the oil out of the ground, heated it up and put it through our engines in the 40 megawatt plant, and it operates fine. So it's a good thing that eventually what will happen is it'll uh, mean that Madagascar doesn't have to import fuel. Now you've just taken us through the large footprint uh, that you have in Africa and with that large footprint I'd assume you have great interactions with government. Yeah. How are you finding it working uh, with governments on the continent? Are the private public partnerships working out? It depends, first of all it depends which government mm -hmm. at which time and it depends on the people that are in the government at any one time. So uh, some things work out, mm -hmm. other things don't. Um, you persevere and then they tend to work themselves out at the end of the day. But anybody telling you that it's easy to work uh, with government in Africa um, in this sector, which, you know, we have a situation where we generate power most of the time our customer is one one client and that client is the government owned power utility and often those power utilities are cash trapped so it's a tough job it's a tough job for them too they're running uh, businesses which don't have liquidity don't have sufficient essentially they're insolvent so it's a tough tough job we have in pretty much everywhere we work we have great relations with the people in government so so we don't have any problem as such other than the fact with the people yeah. other than the fact that that it is a tough uh, assignment to be a power generator on the african continent and sub-saharan africa and in developing countries now this forum is essentially a meeting of minds what are you hoping would be the outcomes of the aaf 2018 you know, I can reflect back. I've been coming to AEF for many of the years since they began. Um, I was probably at the second ever AEF. So I've been coming for years and I've seen the way AEF has grown. Um, what I've seen 
here this week is quite phenomenal. I never thought that uh, AF would grow to this size and would essentially have all the major players of any description uh, in one place. So they're all meeting each other, they're all interacting, whether they're doing what we do, which is invest in electricity, um, or the lawyers looking for business, or the generator manufacturers, or the all the uh, ancillary services that are required to support power development in Africa, they're all here. And so I think the, the big thing that happens is there's this exchange that takes place. Yes, we all sit and we listen to ministers or we listen to private sector people or we participate and we discuss and we share information. But the, the, the net result of that is, is incredible. Um, what happens is everybody's networked. I, I mean, I, I often refer to this as it's become like a big club. It's like a private members club for 2,000 people now. Um, and it's, it, 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 it's really helping uh, develop progress or to, to create progress in Africa. It's helping a lot of people get business um, because of the people they meet here. And they go on and they follow each up with each other. So I'm, uh, I wouldn't say there's any specific outcome, but I think that the, the, the single biggest outcome is this development of this club atmosphere where everybody seems to know everybody these days. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing, yeah. Paul, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.